What's happening, Amers? Dan Lawless here, back with another transfer video slash uh, match reaction or whatever. Going to be talking about the Hertha Berlin West Ham match, which saw a really just brilliant performance from Sebastian Allaire. Obviously, it's going to be talking about some transfer stuff, Chuba Apcom, Bertrand Traore. Uh, we're going to get into all of that stuff but before we do the video is sponsored by Unibet if you want if you like what we do on this channel and you want to support us do click the link in the description below check out their blogs they've got some blogs there but just by clicking the link in the description you can help us out but like I said they've got some um, stories and blogs on all the latest transfer stories so if you want to see what they have to say and what's going on in the world of transfers then check them out but we're going to get into some West Ham transfers right now well, after we talk about the game. Um, so just watch the Hertha Berlin West Ham game that saw West Ham beat Hertha Berlin five goals to three. Really thrilling game, really interesting. And we got to see two assists and a goal from Sebastian Allaire. Great game for him. Second game for the club. And he, he just looks unbelievable. I mean, a great assist for Fournals, who also got his first goal for the club. Very good goal. And just a brilliant assist from, from Allaire, who, who, you know, really shows what he can do. And he's not, you know, despite his size and label of a target man, he's so much more and how important he's going to be. And then he also got an assist from a for a Lanzini goal, another really good goal. And then ended up getting his own goal himself with uh, a great free kick from uh, Robert Snodgrass. He didn't really even have to move. It sort of like went right to his head and he put it far corner. Goal. We even saw a Carlos Sanchez goal. What, am I te what did I tell you after the Fulham game? He changed his hairstyle and he's a new player. He's a player reborn. I mean, he gave away a foul not that long after. But let's forget about that. It's the assist. Great assist into Diangana. Brilliant to see Diangana. Um, well taken goal. Brilliant to see him get a goal. Always love to see the youth. Um, you know, score and, and just do well in general. And finally, we got to see an Antonio goal. He looked good when he came on. He Actually, that's someone else who I want to talk about a bit. But it uh, looked really good when he came on. And I, I'm really expecting big things from him this season. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a tough one. We It took us sort of going behind. We went behind three times in the game to ultimately come back and win it. Um, yeah, I mean, going forward, brilliant. We've got some great attacking players and some of the link-up play that we saw was was unreal. But the one thing that worries me is this high line that we're playing. It's It leaves us so open at the back and so susceptible to counter-attacks. We saw a few times where we'd be, you know, playing a high back line and they'd just get in behind us. They'd play a, a ball over the top or a through ball and there's just, you know, acres of space between the two centre backs at the back, and it's just they can just, you know, get the ball over the top, run through them, and they're through on goal one and one. And that's something we really need to look at. We really need to, Pellegrini needs to find a way to still play the attacking football that he wants to play, but without leaving us so exposed at the back, because I can see us conceding a lot of goals next season like we did last season. And we had, and for the most of the game, we had the desired centre back pairing of Diop and Balbuena. So it's it's one of the things: is it the players, is it the personnel, or is it the system? I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards the system. We'll see a lot more. Obviously, it's pre season. We're going to see a lot more during the season. But we saw this last season as well. So it's not just a case of being pre season. So I don't, I don't be negative after we've just come and scored five goals and we've seen two our two new signings get on the score sheets, but. That is something we need to look into. Um, apart from that, we're just yeah seeing a lot of overall improvements, and you know looking forward to the season. Now can't wait for it to get started. I'm worried obviously about the Man City game, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about the game. What are your thoughts overall, and what do you think about Alaire and Fournals? Two looks like two very brilliant signings and money well spent. Um, so. We're looking at possibly making, uh, adding some players, adding some strikers. Obviously, Hugh Gill's gone on loan. We couldn't sell him. Um, so we're looking to get a, a third striker in. We've, we've got Ale, we've got Hernandez. We really do need another striker, ideally. And the, one of the names being talked about is Chuba Apcom, the former Arsenal Academy uh, player 
5 million pounds, they're talking about 23 years old from, I think it's how you say it, it's P-A-O-K Solan Salonica, Salonica, is it P-A-O-K Salonica, Greek team, 8 goals in, thir eight, eight goals in 32 games, <sighs> I don't know about this one, to be honest, 5 million pounds is quite a good price, but if you look at his track record, he has not done well in England, every, near enough every team that he's gone to and all the loan teams he, ha he had in League One and the Championship, um, you know, teams like Brighton and Hull and, you know, he went on quite loan to quite a few teams and it just, he just didn't work out. He didn't end up getting into Arsenal's side because he just didn't perform well on loan and now he's gone to Greece. He's doing all right. He's doing, he's doing not bad. They've, they've won, they won the Championship, they won the league last season um, but it's still the Greek league, isn't it? It's still the Greek league at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I just think five, it's five million, but I think that's just going to be a waste of money. It does seem like it's, it's not much money at all, but if it was a loan deal, maybe. And I know it's we're talking about third choice striker here, but I'd rather if Zande Silva can, you know, get on the road to recovery, I would rather just have Zande Silva as that third choice, if we're going third choice. I mean, there are, surely there are players available on loan out there as that we could take on a third choice strike, stri as a first choice striker, that would be much better. I don't see any point in bringing this guy in a as, a third as a third choice striker. Like I said, no success in England at all. Arsenal fans, if you're watching, if any Arsenal fans are watching, let me know what you guys thought of him. Do you think he was, it was harshly, sold and he should have got a bit more time um i think he's nearly 24 years old i think he's nearly t almost 24 so the clock's ticking on him it's not like we're signing this young player with lots of room for development so yeah if you would ask me i'd say no on that one now another former uh england youth prospect if you want to call it that, uh, english premier league youth pro prospect uh, bertrand Traore. Uh, was a Chelsea Academy player, very uh, highly rated player. A lot of people had sort of high hopes for him. Chelsea fans as well had very high hopes for Traore, and yeah, and it just didn't end up working out. And he's gone to Lyon, and he's doing quite well there. You know, eight goals and two assists in thirty-eight games. Sorry, I, I, you are going to point out that I'm obviously reading them stats. You can't expect me to have this all up in my head. Eight in th eight goals and two assists in 38 games. He's a winger predominantly. This is the thing what I don't understand about that is he's a winger. He can play anywhere along that midf midfield. So either, uh, either wing or the attacking midfield. I think he can also play as a striker. Maybe that's why we're looking at him. Um so we're talking about a loan deal, which I don't know if I think Leon are particularly thrilled about. If we can get him on loan, then maybe. But it would have to be surely to, to play him as a striker. Like I said, we've got um, Snodgrass, we've got Antonio, we've got Anderson, you've got Lanzini. So all these players that, that can, can play on the wings, I'm probably missing. So Dean Garner as well so i think we've got plenty of coverage on the wings we don't need wingers so if we're bringing him as a striker which isn't his exactly his preferred position then he's not exactly a known as a goal scorer he's not isn't banging goals it doesn't really seem to get a lot of assists anyway i'm just going off last season so yeah i mean he, he he's good with the ball he's a skillful player but i don't know and alone I'd, I'd maybe give it a go Maybe on loan, but I can't see him going for that. So I can't see this still happening anyway. Um, lastly, the rumours have come back up. They keep coming. They won't go away. Antonio is wanted by Crystal Palace. Mikel Antonio, Crystal Palace are interested in signing him. And we've heard this rumour for like the past couple of seasons now. Obviously, Zaha is heavily linked with a move away from the club. Talking about Everton, right? which is baffling like that. He, one minute he wants Champions League football, then he's linked with Arsenal and Everton, both teams who, were in the champ who aren't in the Champions League, and Everton who are nowhere near the Champions League. So, money, in it? It's all money at the end of the day. But anyway, he's linked away with a move away. So maybe they could look to replace him with Mikel Antonio. I don't see why we'd sell him 
to Crystal Palace unless they paid big money for him. You know, they'd have to pay very, very good money. It'd have to be over 30 million. I mean, if they're getting like 70 million for Zaha, they've got money to play with there. And like I said, Antonio is really looking good in pre-season. He, he looked very good towards the end of last season. So that's a player I, I wouldn't want to part with easily or readily. So if the money was there, if they paid big money, then we can have a conversation. If we're talking over 30 million, then I'd go, I'd definitely want to think about that for sure. But I would rather keep him, if we can, like I say, he got a goal today. I know it's pre-season, but he got a goal. Obviously scored again, that uh, goal against Tottenham at their ground, first goal at their new stadium. And But just overall, he just started to really just come back to that player that we saw when we first signed him. So, yeah, if we can, keep hold of him. If the, money, if the offer's good enough, though, I'll definitely, I'll definitely consider taking that and if we can reinvest that back into the squad. Let me know what you guys think. Would you sell to Palace? What would be the number? How much would you sell uh, Mikel Antonio to Crystal Palace for? Uh, anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching. We'll probably have another transfer update. We will have a post-match pint after the Afro Echo Bilbao game. So look out for that first post-match pint of the season, the pre-season. Uh, to kick things off so look out for that we've got all sorts of other bits and pieces coming up if you want to check out my other channel as well dan damo and jay so i'll put a little thing there or there either way i'll press it but there or there and yeah i've got a new podcast episode coming out so look out for that one one thing left to say come on you irons <laughs>